this is the rusted willow and my name is tammy and today i am bringing you christmas in july so let's get into diy number one all right guys i found this baseboard well i didn't find it i still have a stash so i have a stash of i think it's like 12 inches or 13 inch baseboard it is so beautiful and i like to use it whenever i can so i cut off the good piece because half of it well over half of it was split on one side and so that gave me an idea to make these christmas trees so my husband would not let me use the saw to cut the bottom straight so he didn't trust me with it because it was not up against the um, back of the saw so just know that you can use power tools but know your limitations so anyway this is how I, so I'm going to use the drill in this. <laughs> I didn't use the saw this time, but I'm going to use the drill. Um, so what I did was I put two sides together. I put one decorative side and then one plain side, and I am going to drill holes in both of them so they are in the same spot on both sides. Gosh, I hope that makes sense, but you can see what I'm doing here. And honestly, I should have put the clamp on either end instead of right in the center because now I need to go back and put another hole where the clamp was to make it even because the rest of them are spread out pretty evenly. And then because this is such old wood and it's baseboard, um, I made sure to sand down the rough edges because there was, oh, splinters. I got a splinter really bad in my finger. Anyway, there is splintered wood and, and all that stuff. So anyway, just be careful when handling wood. I probably should be wearing gloves, but it's okay. Anyway, so I did the same thing to both sets of these. There I go, sanding them down. Both sets of these uh, Christmas trees. And you can see that the holes line up. And I love the white colors. You could leave them rustic like this and white and chippy or you can paint them. So like this one, I'm going to paint in silver shadow. It is a deco art, folk art. I don't know what brand that is, but it's made by plaid. So it's a chalk paint. I can't remember. I'll have to go down and look at a bottle, but anyway. So I just do a light coat over the edges and don't forget to do the top because I did and I had to go back and redo it. So this is like a silvery gray color. I don't know. It's really beautiful. I love it because it's muted. It's a very muted color. And you can still see the white through the brush strokes. And so I like that. So I don't do two full coats. I don't do full coverage. I just do a light, covered, a light coverage over the top of both of these trees. Now, this project is so versatile. You could use this in any any decor situation. So if you wanted shabby chic, you could paint them pink. You could leave them white. You can mix and match them. If you want a traditional Christmas, one side could be red. One side could be left white. You could do red and green. I mean, you could do any colors you want. You could do coastal, which is kind of like what I'm doing. So I used silver shadow and I also used, um, this is dusk, the new color from, or the new Waverly color from plaid. So these are all plaid products that I'm using and I absolutely love these colors. They are my, they are my top favorite. So I'm actually using like five of my top favorite colors in the next project as well. So stay tuned for that. But what I do here, so I do the same thing for both of these trees. I cut them down into triangles. I clamp them together, drill the holes, and then I paint them a beautiful color. Now I'm going with um, a very muted color this year. I, I like the black and the, the pink and the white. And so I think these colors will fit in perfectly. And if I don't put them in my booth, uh, I love them. I'm probably gonna make me some, some more for myself and make them black and pink. I'll do one black one set pink and then leave one white so that way it goes with my decor but these are gorgeous i love how they turned out so then i'm just taking this twine and i 
wrap tape around it so that I could weed it through really easily to these holes. And I don't make the holes oversized. I want them just the same size as the jute twine so that way um, there's not a lot of slack in them. Cause Okay, so when you are stringing these through, you can do this one of two ways. You can either pull your jute tight and have the trees not have as much give, or you can leave the jute loose. And that way you can kind of bend them so that they're more, um, I don't know how to explain it, but so that the boards aren't side by side, but they're kind of, I don't know bent in <laughs> I don't know they can stand up better that way but I left mine tight because I feel like this baseboard is super thick and it stands up just fine on its own as is so I didn't need to leave a lot of room to have them um I don't know so you just kind of bend them in at a triangle you know you could do that if you wanted to now this one I didn't tight as tight as the first one I did leave a little bit of give but honestly it wasn't necessary because the trim is so thick so if you have pieces of wood scrap wood that is not super thick leave some extra slack in the little knots that you tie in the jute and that way you can kind of bend them in in like a triangle position um, I don't know how else to explain that and then they will stand up on their own but I love how these turned out and I do go ahead and burn off the little fuzzies. Today is the Power Up collaboration. This is hosted by Sarah from Can Sarah DIY It and Zaina at OK at Home DIY. Make sure you go over and visit their channels. I will have the links to their channels listed below in my description box as well as the playlist. I am joining all of my friends this month and I am so excited to be able to join the Power Up Collab this month because I use power tools on almost all of my DIYs. I just don't show it. So there are no Dollar Tree DIYs in this video. And if you like that sort of thing, I'm sorry, but I am using my stash and I am bringing you some high-end, beautiful Christmas in July DIYs. So let's get back to it. Here is DIY number two. All right, guys, I have this frame in my stash. I picked it up at Goodwill and I love it. It is gorgeous and it is very old. It is very chippy and it is solid wood. So look at this frame. I am just pulling out the nails. It did have um, some cardboard and a picture of a little girl. I don't know. It's like one of the standard pictures that you always find. Um, and it has this gold frame. So I am, if you hear any chewing, it's my dog. He's chewing on a hoof or something like that. So anyway, um, I got this frame for $6.99 at Goodwill and I'm going to clean it really good with crud cutter to get all the grime off of there and look at the oak on this wood. I hate to paint it, but guess what? I'm going to paint it. Yes, I am. Okay. So I just get it cleaned up real good and then I am going through my spindles. This is just some of my stash and I just pulled out a bunch of table legs this spindle is actually from a bed post, so don't throw those bed posts away. And I am going to be cutting these down. And my husband is not the best cameraman, so I had to kind of guide him as well as talk about where I was going to cut these spindles. He got a lot of the floor, but I fortunately cut that out. And then I decided, why didn't I cut that little part off first? So make sure you cut those little parts off first. This scared him to death. This is why I was not able to cut my Christmas trees. <laughs> He's like, you're not doing that again. I cut off the little nubbies and then I cut the rest of my spindles down to various lengths. And I tried to make them all different. I just was trying to see like which could be my longest spindle. So after that, I just tried to cut them all different lengths, get a nice clean edge. And now this one had a screw in it. So I had to be really careful and not get close to the screw because that could that could be harmful to your health, actually. <laughs> so if you have screws in like table legs and stuff like that, if you can't get them out, don't cut up close to them. Because if your blade gets stuck, like it could break the blade, it could come back, hurt you. There's all kinds of things that could happen. So just 
be mindful of what you're cutting into. After I cut my spindles, I come inside and I start painting this frame with white Waverly chalk paint. And I give it two good coats. And I use my spray bottle to kind of water it down and go over the frame a little easier to get in these grooves. Now, I haven't decided if I'm gonna go over all that detail with uh, another color to bring out some of the detail, but I kind of like it just white. So I left it white. You will see in the final reveal. So anyway, after I um, painted that, uh, I cut down this board. It's just, um, I don't know what it's called, but anyway, it's left over from the paneling that I used to shiplap my basement room which I haven't posted that yet because the room's not done still so hopefully hopefully that'll get done this year anyway I did spray paint it with rust-oleum two times in the flat white first as I did the spindles so I spray painted everything first then I went over that board with the white Waverly chalk paint because then it would take less chalk paint and it was just easier to do that and um, it wouldn't soak up so much chalk paint. And then I used nails like they did before with the picture that was in there. And I put in the board because I didn't have any of those little picture hanger things. And I thought, you know what? It was good for them 50 years ago. It's going to be good for me today. And I got the nails in there just perfectly. And this is what it looks like all white. And now I'm just starting to lay out my spindles just to kind of get like the spacing and all of that stuff. And then I decided um, I'm gonna draw a line, which I don't show, but I did measure out where center was and I drew a line in pencil where my center line was so that I could make sure that everything was center. So I kind of lay out the spindles and then I just start painting them. So the colors that I chose to paint are Dusk, Silver Shadow, Haze, and those are the home, Haze and Silver Shadow are the home uh, decor, folk art, chalk paint colors, which I love. I think they're gorgeous. And then I have, um, what other color do I have there? Sage and Silver Lining, Waverly Chalk Paint. So I have Dusk, Silver Lining, Sage, Haze, and Silver Shadow. And they're all pretty similar in color, but they're just a slight, I don't know, shade difference. They're either more blue, more green, or more gray. And I, I love how they turned out. So I am just painting over the spindles and I give them two good coats. Now here's a tip. I wish I would have painted the spindles before I cut them and that way I would just have to paint the ends because it took quite a long time to paint all the little spindles. So there's your tip for the day. Paint them, then cut them, which that's what I will be doing next time because I am going to be making more of these for my booth and I love how this turned out. I think it's so gorgeous. I I haven't decided if I'm going to keep this one or sell this one, but I love it. And I think it will go perfect in my nautical room. So, or with my nautical decor. Anyway, I love it. Love it. Love it. All right. So I am just continuing to paint these and I kind of grouped them there by color so that I wouldn't forget what color they are. So then I laid them out and you can see my center line that I um, drew down the center. So I am using a combination of wood glue and hot glue and I just start placing them down and I, I put them on there first so I could see like where the actual spindle is going to be touching the, the picture because not all, not all parts of the spindle touches because they're, you know, curved and carved and anyway, all of that stuff. So. I just do my best to kind of lay them out in different different orders and honestly I didn't even pay attention to the colors <laughs> I was just like what size is next what size is next so
So luckily, um, I didn't have too many of the same colors next to each other. So tell me what you think. Is this something that you would put in your home? I absolutely love it. And honestly, you can't really tell, but the part that was gold on this frame has kind of a green hue to it. That's why I haven't decided to distress it because even though I painted it with white Waverly chalk paint, and honestly, I didn't really paint it that well, I still left it a little distressed looking. As you can tell on the frame, there's still some spots showing through. I love it like that. I mean, I think it looks very, very farmhouse and very shabby chic and just, I love it. I just love everything about it. I have not distressed it yet. I just, I've left it. The gold turned the white chalk paint into like a minty color. All right, guys, it's time for the final reveal. Do not forget to go over and visit my friend Sarah and my friend Zaina over at their channels and also the playlist. I love these ladies. They are all very, very talented and you will not be disappointed. I will have the playlist along with all of their channels listed down in my description box below. So I hope you guys have a great week and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. All right, guys. Bye.